Disney's Grand Californian is the shining star of the Disney-owned hotels at the Disneyland Resort, and the price is also out of this world. Stay tuned to find out if I think the perks and pizzazz is really worth the price in this Honest Hotel Review. Hello everyone, this is Julia with Honest Hotel Reviews and in this video I'll be giving you a tour of the resort while giving you a detailed review in the following categories. Overall experience, room, hotel amenities, as well as value. But stick around to the end to find out if I'd stay here again if I'd recommend this hotel, and specifically who I would recommend it to. A quick disclaimer before we dive into this review. I stayed here prior to the pandemic, and at the time that I'm releasing this video, many of the hotel amenities and experiences differ from what we experienced. I am hoping things will continue to move towards how they were prior to the pandemic, but I strongly urge you to check out the Disneyland website or app for the most up-to-date and current offerings. I will add those links in the description box below. Okay, let's get started. I've walked through the Grand Californian more times than I can count but nothing can describe the feeling of awe and excitement Ben and I had walking through those beautiful stained glass doors into that expansive lobby as first time guests. I'm gonna cut straight to the cake here. Even though it's not without its downfalls, especially where the price is concerned, we had our best Disneyland vacation experience staying here. This hotel delivers on its name's promise. It's Disney, it's grand, and it's Californian in a redwood forest kind of way. As the pinnacle hotel of the Disneyland Resort, you expect it to be the best of their three hotels across the board, and it doesn't disappoint. Like the Disneyland and Paradise Pier hotels, there's a list of amenities and a certain magic that you really don't get anywhere else. But this hotel has its own entrance to both California Adventure Park and Downtown Disney. This is the one hotel at the entire resort that made me feel like I was constantly and totally immersed in the magic. There is something to be said for the attention to detail in all the decor, from the handcrafted wood pieces, the various hidden Mickeys, that giant fireplace with wooden rocking chairs that welcomes you in, to the pianist playing those nostalgic Disney classics at the grand piano. This place strikes at the right chords in my grown-up Disney heart, which weirdly wants sophistication with a hint of silliness at the same time. The holidays bring an extra level of magic with carolers and Christmas trees or giant edible Halloween displays. There's really no place like it. We were greeted by a friendly lady at guest services who checked us in and told us our room was ready. Here's a big tip. Ask what the bed setup is for your room at check-in. It is always going to be easier to ask for a different room type at check-in than it will be once you've already arrived at the room. This is actually one of my biggest pet peeves of any Disney Resort hotel. You can't specifically request a king bed or two queen beds when you're booking online. While some of you may not care, I know I would prefer a king room if it's just Ben and I, but especially if you have four guests in your room and you don't want two people sleeping on a pullout couch, make sure you let the cast member know at check-in. As long as you're willing to wait and they have the availability, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, this hotel is big, so another tip I should mention is about bell service. There is a bell service desk and a sign telling you where to wait if you need help with your bags. 
but we didn't know that until after we had already gone up to our rooms and it was never offered to us. But it is a big hotel and so if you have a lot of bags and your room is far from the lobby, I definitely recommend it. Aside from those few negative things, everything else was awesome. The thing about our experience that really stands out in my mind is the sheer level of resort immersion. This is the only hotel at the Disneyland Resort that has a monorail driving through it. While there's no designated stop for this hotel, the downtown Disney monorail station is a short stroll, but really it's almost the same distance to the Disneyland Esplanade. So unless you're just wanting a relaxing scenic ride into Tomorrowland, you may just prefer to walk. Please remain seated until the monorail comes to a complete stop. From check-in to check-out, Ben and I didn't leave the property. Because of what this hotel offers, plus because Downtown Disney and California Adventure are literally at your doorstep, there are so many options for fun and food, you really don't need to leave. From start to finish, we had a wonderful experience. I mean, how can you not? The room is definitely on the smaller side and had all the basic essentials you would expect from a room this size. But the quality of the furnishings, the decor and the surroundings made you feel like you were in an enchanted forest. We stayed in a wood slash courtyard king room and it really was a magical stay. The balcony overlooked a tree filled courtyard with a monorail running right past our room. And in the distance, we could see Grizzly Peak. The few dollars it cost us to upgrade to this room was totally worth the money. And in future visits, I may even splurge for a Parkview room. Not only is this one of the cleanest hotel rooms we've stayed in at the Disneyland Resort, it also has the most subtly sophisticated Disney theming. The beautiful Chippendale orange tree mural behind the bed was stunning, and the bed is super comfy. There were other hidden Mickeys and characters hiding around the room, just waiting to be discovered. The bathroom had a beautiful rain shower, and the double vanity had great lighting. They also had those wonderful Disney H2O Plus toiletries. There was a full-sized hairdryer, terry cloth robes, a safe that would easily fit a laptop, and a fridge that would barely fit a laptop. For a more in-depth look at the room, check out our full room tour and review. We ordered room service once while we were here, and we had the chicken quesadilla and the forest mushroom pizza. Both were tasty and arrived in a reasonable amount of time, and they even gave us a mini Tabasco bottle, which I thought was super cute. You can also make purchases to be sent to your room. One day, Ben took advantage of this and surprised me with a beautiful set of Betsy Johnson limited edition ears. While I was freshening up for the evening, Ben snuck out to the deck and arranged for a set of these ears to be billed to the room, and they were hand delivered less than an hour later. There are so many amazing amenities and experiences at Disney's Grand Californian, it's kind of hard to decide where to start. As a Disney hotel guest, Extra Magic Hours is pretty awesome. It allows you early access to one of the parks every day of the week. Four, three, two, one! Let the adventure begin! This is so cool, but it's also really early. So I would have to say that my single favorite amenity exclusive to the Grand Californian is the entrance to Disney's California Adventure Park. Ben and I would often start our day with a quick stroll to the Starbucks in the park for our morning coffee and breakfast. Or we might end our day with a visit to Carthay Circle Lounge and a fast pass to Soren, all of which is within a five minute walk of our room. The Grand Californian pool deck is one of the most beautiful pool areas in all of Anaheim. It's definitely our favorite so far. It has three separate pools, the Mariposa Pool, 
the redwood pool with the 90 foot water slide, and the fountain pool. plus two hot tubs, and a kid's splash pool. This sprawling grotto has so many nooks and crannies. Whether you're here to splash around in the pool or you want a more calm and relaxing vibe, you can still manage to find a spot that fits your style. There is a place for everyone. Some of the best features of this pool are the super cushy loungers and chairs. I really appreciate that they have so many set up with plenty of umbrellas and side tables as well. If you want a little extra privacy or a spot to claim as your own, there are a number of poolside cabanas and special areas available to rent for a fee. To help you stay safe, they have lifeguards on duty at all the pools plus complimentary life jackets for your kids. While we were there, they also had a number of water stations set up as well. If you work up an appetite while swimming and soaking up the sun, their poolside menu serves up food from the Craftsman Bar and Grill. While we were there, there were servers scurrying around the pool to serve guests. Unfortunately, when we were ready to get some food, we had no luck with one coming around and we weren't able to wave one down. It was no big deal to us because we knew it would just be cheaper for us to walk in and order from them directly. Ben and I went to the Craftsman Grill a number of times during our stay because it's a great quick service restaurant. The food is really tasty and the prices aren't too shabby. Some of our favorite items were the Reese's Peanut Butter Blondie, the Margarita Pizza one for best bang for your buck, the chicken shawarma was absolutely delicious, but it was on the pricey side. Craftsman Bar is a wonderful place to hang out, with lots of chairs and bar stools that overlook the pool deck. Other restaurants on site include Storyteller's Cafe, which is a home-style buffet and character dining restaurant, the Hearthstone Lounge, located next to the lobby, but the most renowned of all the restaurants at Disney's Grand Californian is the award-winning fine dining restaurant, the Napa Rose. If you can't snag a reservation, the lounge at the Napa Rose is also fantastic. If you feel the need to work off some of the delicious food, they've got you covered. The Eureka Fitness Center has an awesome array of top of the line workout equipment, and they even offer Peloton bikes. It was super clean and cool and well ventilated. And they offered a filtered water station, kashi bars and towels. They also offer a number of instructor led activities, Two of the coolest are the Rise and Stretch in the Park and the Get Up and Go Power Walk, both of which take you into Disney's California Adventure Park before it even opens. In the lobby, there's a gift shop for Disney paraphernalia and some of your essentials, but they're all at park prices. There is so much more available that I haven't even touched on that once you check in, you almost won't need to leave the property. Be sure to ask about any special events during your stay, but you also have the Disneyland Resort information channel displayed in your room to keep you up to date on park hours, special events, or just to play some of that sentimental Disney music. Let's take a look at value. Look, I'm a huge Disney geek, and it's taken me this long and a special occasion to stay at the Grand Californian. The reason for that is entirely because of the out of this world price. You are paying Disneyland park prices for everything from snacks to toiletries to water bottles. So if you're looking for any supplies like non-park food or some essentials that you really don't wanna pay an arm and a leg for, you will need to leave the Disney property. So, would I stay here again? 
The short answer is yes, I do plan on staying here again, but I just can't justify the price right now. If I stay here again, I may try to offset the price by staying four or five nights in a more budget-friendly good neighbor hotel, and then only stay here for two or three. So who should stay here? Disney diehards with money to spend. If you are a Disney fanatic and you have the opportunity to stay here within your budget, I highly recommend you do. There is a level of Disney hospitality and magic that just can't be matched by any non-Disney hotel. Getting to wake up in the morning to the sound of the rope drop announcement in the distance and Ben disappearing for 20 minutes then returning from downtown Disney with Starbucks coffees and fresh beignets in hand is something I will never forget and it can't be experienced anywhere else. If you're expecting high-end luxury, which you might rightfully want for these prices, I recommend you perhaps check out the JW Marriott, the Radisson Blue, or the Westin Anaheim. Don't get me wrong, the Grand Californian is one of my very favorite hotels for a Disneyland vacation. But if you aren't the biggest Disney fan and you're looking for luxury, you will be disappointed. There are also a lot of viewers who just want a place to sleep and rest between their times at the park. This probably isn't the place for you. However, if you want the most immersive experience possible from your Disneyland vacation, the Grand Californian hits the bullseye. If this hotel is out of your budget, we still absolutely love the Disneyland Hotel, which is usually noticeably less expensive per night but still has a lot of great Disney magic and nostalgia. If you're trying to decide between the two, check out our full honest review of the Disneyland Hotel. We post honest reviews of Disneyland Resort area hotels and we would love your support. Please head over to our YouTube channel or check us out at honesthotelreviews.com for more recommendations and travel tips. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Julia, and this has been another Honest Hotel Review.